Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I hope you had fun going through these uh, three notebooks. And just before we leave, I'd like to give you a few references that are hopefully important and useful for you going forward with the pileups. First of all, I already mentioned if uh, you're interested and want to start using pileups, I strongly recommend to check out our main documentation. And more importantly, we have seen very briefly how you can create a new operator and that has been fun, but uh, if you really want to start creating new operators, please check out the adding section in our documentation and uh, understand all the details that we have not been able to go through today. And uh, that hopefully will get you started and able to create any uh, type and complex uh, type of operator. Moreover, if you are even more interested on the implementation details and want to know more about the history of PyLops, uh, please check out our uh, paper that we have uh, published a few uh, year ago or so on uh, Software X, which is freely available. Moreover, uh, we have seen just a very brief uh, appetizer of what PyLops can do uh, going forward. Uh, there are two main locations where you will find uh, a lot of useful uh, information and useful uh, uh, examples. Our tutorial page in the main documentation. And also here, uh, this is where I personally store most of the notebooks I work on. They're not nigh as nice and polished as those that uh, we eventually put in the documentation, but they could be a good source of inspiration. We have seen that PyLops is quite powerful and useful for solving problems in different disciplines and to get a flavor of different areas of research that are actually using PyLops for performing cutting edge research. We are trying to store and uh, collect all the different references to papers that have so far used PyLops. It is quite short right now, but there are quite a few that are going to come out in the next uh, year or two. What well, research that we no, and uh, different people have already been doing using this library. And also another, sorry, very interesting uh, direction where PyLops is uh, going is in uh, the field of astronomy for the imaging of strong gravitational lenses. And uh, if you are not really familiar with this discipline, I really recommend you to check out this uh, great library where uh, PyLops is now starting to be used to facilitate the solution of inverse problems for solving uh, actually problems in a different discipline from the one that the three of us uh, that we have uh, presented pilots today are familiar with, showing the easy extensibility and also the flexibility of this library. And finally, going forward, I'd like to mention three different areas where we have been working on uh, here and there on and off. Two libraries that uh, I will called sibling libraries of PyLops. The first, first one is called PyLops Distributed. The second one is PyLops called PyLops GPU. Distributed is basically a port of most of the operator uh, to Dask, allowing the uh, perform, performing inverse problems in a distributed uh, system of computers. And so extending the capability of PyLops beyond the single uh, machine and solving some of the bottlenecks, both in terms of computation and memory requirements. We have also explored for quite a while the possibility of using PyTorch as a backend compared to NumPy, and that has led to quite a few interesting avenues. First of all, we have been able to create uh, something what we call the Torch Operator, which is a overload of a Torch module on which you can uh, feed any PyLops operator. So you could make any PyLops operator actually uh, into an autograd uh, graph of uh, PyTorch, and that could be useful when you want to mix, for example, deep neural network with some physics-based uh, processes within the same chain of operators. And finally, this is uh, very new and very fresh. So far, I've been mostly playing it myself in my fork, but if you're interested to contribute and you want to see how that looks like, just please reach out. And this is the idea of uh, actually moving into using CuPy instead of PyTorch when it comes to purely porting PyLops functionalities to GPU. CuPy is now a very mature library. It's very much one-to-one uh, -one with NumPy. So it makes the change of the code base very limited compared to having to kind of rebuild from scratch a parallel library 
using PyTorch. And uh, it is showing quite a lot of speed up in several problems. So it's uh, something that hopefully will very quickly make it into the main uh, code base. If you just want to get in touch with us, feel free to reach on GitHub and write an issue, whether it's to specific aspect of the code base or if you are solving a problem and you're getting stuck. We're also both active on our Slack page, but also in the software underground Slack community. If you are into software and into subsurface problem, it's a great place where you can reach us and also discuss with other scientists about different problems of uh, the subsurface related to software development. And eventually, you can also reach out directly to us on email and LinkedIn. We are friendly and happy to get more and more people involved in this project. Once again, I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I'll see you in the Q&A session.